Hello everyone, welcome to the course Data Structures. Uh, this is Tulsi Chitra, Associate Professor, Department of CSIT, MLR Institute of Technology. Let us see today's overview of the course. We are going to study about uh, stack introduction. Then we will be seeing about the definition of stack followed by what are the different applications of stack. Then we will be looking into what is stack ADT. These are the concepts where we are going to discuss in today's session. Let us see uh, why we need to go for the stack concept. Actually, in arrays and linker list, allow the insertion and deletion of elements at any place in the list. That means, when you are going to see about arrays, array is a linear representation where we can insert the elements at the beginning or at the end or in the middle also. At the same time, when you are going to see about the linker list, there also we can perform the insertion, deletion at beginning, end and middle. Any of the part we can insert the elements. But there are certain situations in computer science that one wants to restrict insertions and deletions so that they can take place only at the beginning or end of the list or not in the middle. That means, here this statement is telling you about if you want to insert the insertion and deletion has to be done only at the beginning or at the end. In that cases, other than the middle. In that cases, we are going to use other data structures. What are the other data structures that can be used? when you want to implement these type of applications. In that, we are having two data structure that comes under this category. They are, one is stack and another one is queue. These two data structures will be the applications what we have discussed, insertion and deletions are going to be done at either at the beginning or based on the end of the list. Let us look into the concept of stack. Now, how we are going to define a stack? A stack is nothing but stack is a list of elements in which an element can may be inserted or deleted only at one end. As we have discussed in the previous concept itself or previous statements itself, we can say that here the insertion and deletions is possible only at one end and that is called the top of the stack and we can see this stack sometimes known as a LIFO that is last in first out and how we are going to represent this in a diagrammatic way. Here also we are taking the list of elements where it is going to represent a linear representation. But for array and linker list, we are going to represent everything in the linear form as horizontal. But when you are going to represent the stack, this is also a linear form of representation, but we are going to represent it vertically like this way. We are going to represent it vertically. This is also linear representation, but we are representing them vertically. Now, observe here, here we are going to perform the insertion and deletion operations, but we are naming them differently. In stack, we are going to perform the insertion, deletion operations. They are naming with the different names where we are going to perform the insertion based on push and deletion will be performed on pop. And here the top is a one which is going to represent the top of the stack. Now, let us look into the applications of stack in real time where we are going to use this stack in our real time or day to day life. If you are going to see a stack of books, I have placed uh, four books on a table. Now, I want to place one more book on the table where I could I play, where could I place? I can place it on the fourth book. That is nothing but the push operation. If I want to take a book, in that case, I am going to perform the pop operation, right. Like that way, we can see this example to perform the push and pop operations on applications of stack. 
and you can see so many examples that uh, in your day to day life we are using the stack where we can see the stack stack of uh, cafeterian plates how they are going to place it based on the lifo order stack of devices stack of boxes and stack of iron clothes and stack of books stack of stones stack of coins all these are going to be placed based on the lifo order these are some of the real time examples where you can see and one more is the application of real time example where you are going to use in the browser that is if i am going to open different urls different urls this one is using the using our concept called stack if i am going to open number of urls that will be stored in the stack how that will be done just you see can you see the example here suppose first i open some url like uh, some linkedin then i have opened uh, google then i opened some facebook and google and some other right if i open different urls how this is going to be stored in back end that means it is going to be stored like this first it will be storing the facebook then you can have the linkedin then you are going to have something like google right if i am opening the number of urls based on that the last one which i have opened that can be accessed first like this way the implementation of back button of your browser if i want to again open the facebook means i need to come back and then i can able to access the facebook like this way the stack implementation is going to work in this real time situations also now let us discuss about what is stack adt we all know that adt is nothing but it is going to have it is going to have data plus operations okay now what is this stack adt is data is nothing but in stack the data is stop and we have different operations can be implemented what are the different operations we are going to perform on stack one is push operation where we can insert the element into the stack the other one is the pop operation where we can remove an element from the stack and the other one is peak operation where you can able to print the top element from the stack and the display operation whatever the elements that was present in the stack all will be printed based on calling the display operation and we have two more functions that is these two functions will be used to check is full means to check whether the stack is full or not and is empty to check whether the stack is empty or not these two cases we can use it if we want otherwise uh, in the push and pop operations itself we will be looking into some other conditions like overflow and underflow cases okay let us look into the implementation part of stacks the stacks can be implemented in two ways one is stack using arrays and another one is stack using linked list now first we will be seeing about how we can implement or how we can uh, perform different operations on stack using arrays yes before going to see look into the operations which we are going to perform on stack let us uh, look into the statement we already discussed about the definition of stack in stack push and pop operations are performed from only one end that is nothing but the top now what is the procedure for performing all the operations in the stack let us consider the stack size is 5 that means we are representing it as an array stack of size like this this is representing a stack stack with some size i am specifying the size as 5 here and we are initializing top equal to minus 1 where top equal to minus 1 represents the stack is empty now see the first step how the representation of diagram will be here we have a stack which is represented vertically and the size is 5 because of that we can store up to 0 1 2 3 and 4 these are the different values we can store and top is initialized to minus 1 now we are trying to insert one element or we are going to push one element onto the top of the stack that means when i am going to do that first top should be incremented that means 
from top minus top equal to minus 1 now it becomes top equal to 0 now after incrementing the top read the value and push it onto the stack that means we are going to insert the element 10 into the stack next i want to push one more element onto the stack that is 20 the same steps are going to be repeated now increment the top now top will be at position 1 and push the element onto the top of the stack next we are going to insert one more element that is increment the top then we are going to insert the element 30 like this way we are going to insert few more elements to check if the size is insufficient in that case what is going to happen right now i want to insert 40 i am going to uh, read the element and incrementing the top and storing the element of 40 in location at the index 3 now i want to insert one more element into stack that is observe top is incremented reading the value of 50 and 50 is going to be inserted at this location right now up to this this is done now if i am trying to insert one more element into stack if i want to uh, check what is the overflow condition here before going to see about the overflow condition if i want to try to insert one more element into this stack the size is 5 all the 5 elements i have inserted because of that if i want to try to insert one more element then the top is greater than size minus 1 because of that it will be going for an overflow condition what is this overflow condition is the size we have specified the size of stack we have given it as 5 but i am trying to insert the sixth element into the stack because of that we do not have uh, the capacity of increasing the size of a static data structure so that we are unable to insert this element in that case we are going to raise an error called overflow this is one case if it is greater top is moving uh, above the size and one more case here i have specified it as equal to what is this case represents equal to means suppose i am having this stack size as 5 right 0 1 2 3 and 4 my top is at this position top is pointing to fourth position and I have inserted the elements 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 here. Right? If I have done this, now I already reached the position of uh, that is I have inserted all the elements into my stack. Now this also leads to the condition of overflow. Why? Because top is pointing to the 4 and I have inserted the element here now i can write one more condition as top equal to size minus one that's why i have mentioned two conditions here we don't have space to insert later right that means if i have filled all the elements then we can mention the statement as top equal to size minus one right next next we are going to have the stack operations the other operation where we are going to have is a pop operation yes before going to see about this let us uh, have the how we are going to write the uh, sub function for this stack using push operation yes i am going to write it here void push off first we are going to check when you are going to push the elements onto the stack this condition has to be verified first that is top greater than or equal to size minus 1 then we are going to print stack overflow we are going to print stack overflow this condition has to be verified when you are going to push the element onto the stack else the other thing what we are going to do is we are going to read the x value which you want to insert into the stack just i have given some statement here you can able to use printf and scanf for reading it then i am going to increment the top value top should be incremented then 
place it onto the stack. What is the name we have given? Stack of top equal to x. This is the element which we have read. That should be placed onto the top of the stack. This is the code where you can write it for this push operation. Then coming to the pop operation. Now, I want to delete the elements from the stack. In this case, when I am going to delete all the elements from the stack, what is the error exception that will be raised? Now, look into here. Top equal to 4. That means it is pointing to the element 40. I want to delete that element. Now, observe. I am going to delete the element 50. Then, top is going to be decremented. Now, top is pointing to the next location. Right? This is how I am going to delete the element from the stack. Now, let us look into the other cases also. Now, I want to delete the element 40. In the same way, I want to, I am going to delete the element 40 and then decrement the top value. Right? In the same way, I want to delete third 30, delete the element, then followed by top should be decremented. Next, we have 20, remove the element from the stack, then decrement the top, that is top becomes 0. Now, I want to delete the 10 also. In that case, remove the element from the stack and move top to the next location, that is nothing but top becomes top equal to minus 1. Where it is going to represent, it is an underflow condition. Right? If I do not have any elements in the stack, if I am trying to remove anything from that stack, then it is going to show you an underflow condition. Okay? These are the cases where you can look into the pop operation. Now, how we are going to write the code for this or sub function for this? Observe. Here, when I am trying to pop the elements from the stack, at the starting itself, we need to verify this. Uh, is there any elements in the stack or not? If you do not have any elements, then in that case, it will be uh, like top equal to minus 1, right? If then it will be showing that stack under flow. Else, if it is not the case, you are going to remove the element from the stack and that one is going to be stored in some x variable, right? Observe the difference between the previous um, push operation and pop operation, there we are reading the element and we are placing it on top of the stack. Insertion is we are doing, right? But here from the top of the stack, we are removing and we are placing it in some variable called x, okay? Observe, this is the statement where we are writing for push and pop. Next, top should be decremented, right? You are going to decrement the top value that means top will be moved to the next location and if you want to delete that the same process is going to be repeated. Now observe another operation where you are going to perform on stack using arrays is peak operation. If I want to display the top element from the stack, top element from the stack, in that case we are going to use it by using stack of top, right? Top is pointing to the the top element in the stack so that directly we can use stack of top that will be displaying the top element in the stack where you can print 50 from this. Next, procedure for display. If I want to display all the operations in that stack, in that case, how we are going to do this? This is your actual elements which we have inserted on, on the stack and here top is pointing to the 50th element. Now, I want to print it. Now, I need to move my top to each and every location so that I can access all the elements and I can print it. Right. Now, top is pointing to 50. That is why I have gathered it and I have placed it in an array and I am trying to print it. Next, I am moving my top value to the next location that is top is decremented. Right. And placing 40 in the next location. Next, I want to print 30, top will be moving to the next location 30 and now we are going to insert that element into the array. Next, top will be moving to the next location that is top becomes 1. 
displaying that element 20 here and at last I want to display 10. In this case top should be decremented, top will be at a 0 and we are going to insert the element 10 into the array. Based on this we are going to display all the elements. Now observe here if I am, if I am displaying the, this element this will be displayed in the 50, 40, 30 and 20. right? We have inserted 10, 20, 30 and 30, 40 and 50 but while displaying we are displaying them in the reverse order. Okay, observe this one and how to write the code for this. When I am trying to display this content, in this case, uh, I have if I have not inserted anything into the stack, in that case, what it has to display? It has to display stack is empty. What is the condition we are going to write? Top equal to minus 1. What it means? We have initialized at the starting, stop, top equal to minus 1 means stack is empty, right? That is the condition we are going to write it here. Next, if I want to print all the elements of the stack. Now, I want to display it from top to bottom, right? That is why the starting point, that means if I have all the elements in the stack, this is pointing to top. That is why we are initializing i equal to top. Then, i should be greater than or equal to 0. Up to the 0th location, we need to print all the elements. That is why we are writing i greater than or equal to 0. And i should be decremented. Why means we have started from the highest value that should be decremented to display all the elements in the reverse order. Let us consider how this is going to work. Now i is equal to top. Top location is nothing but 4. Right? 4. 4 greater than or equal to 0. Yes. Condition is true. I am going to print stack of i. What is stack of i we have? Stack of i is having 50. 50 will be printed. Now, i is going to be decremented, i becomes 3, 3 greater than or equal to 0, right? And here it becomes 3, in s of 3 what we have, 40 will be printed. Now, i will be decremented, i becomes 2, 2 greater than or equal to 0, s of 2 equal to 30, right? That will be printed. Now, i will be decremented, i becomes 1, 1 greater than or equal to 0, s of 1 that is equal to 20 will be printed. Next, i equal to 0, 0 greater than or equal to 0. That is s of 0, 10 is going to be printed. If now i decrements, i becomes minus 1. Now, here the condition is going to be failed. That is one, minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, this condition fails. Now, the loop will be terminated. Like this way, it is going to print 50, 40, 30, 20 and 10. These values will be printed. Now, let us... See the summary what we have discussed in today's session. We have discussed about the complete stack concepts. That is, we have seen uh, stack. What is stack and why we need to use the stack concept? As we discussed uh, array and linker list, uh, we are going to perform insertion and deletion at the uh, beginning and as well as at the middle. But uh, by using stack, we are going to perform only insertion and deletion is going to be done at only one end. Okay, that is about the stack. And then we have discussed about the applications of stack. Applications of stack in real time situations or day to day in our day to day life, how we are going to use them. Then we have discussed something like a stack edit. Stack ADT in that we have seen what is uh, uh, data and what are the different operations we have performed, right? And this uh, data is the top and operations are push, pop, peak, uh, display, uh, is full, is empty, all these operations we have seen. And how to implement the stack? Stack can be implemented in two ways we have seen. Uh, one is by using arrays. And another one is by using linker list. These are the two ways of implementation, but we have seen uh, the array, array implementation, right? And uh, we have seen the different operations, how we are going to perform on arrays. These are all the concepts where we have covered in this session. Thank you.